us to get rid of miscreants, unscrupulous elements within us and in this country. Arab and became as a witness for APC. And he claims that he's representing Labour Party. Hey, that was what we stood against. That he has been expelled. And he cannot stand for Labour Party. Yes, Alright, welcome to Nation Voice Tower. My name is Angelo Himalayas, your anchor. I have lots of updates. These updates will keep you glued to this channel because this channel is that channel that brings you updates that no other can give to you anytime, any day. First of all, I have um, an update so far on the proceedings today at the Court of Appeal talking about the ongoing presidential elections petitions tribunal. Now, the story so far says that the People's Democratic Party and their counsel, Mike Ezekome, and the rest have produced two witnesses that are ad hoc staff from the INEC office, that is from the Independent National Electoral Commission themselves. This is intriguing, right? Now, stay cool, I'll give you more. Now, the PDP's two witnesses, who I've already told you are ad hoc staff, with name Friday Eguma, who served as um, a, 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 a PO in Abia State, and then one Grace Timothy, who served as a presiding officer too in Plateau State. Now, the witnesses so far have testified against um, the APC and against the Independent National Electoral Commission, which they work for. Now, Friday, who worked or who served in Abia State as a presiding officer, said to the Honorable Court today, under oath, that the results of the House of Representatives elections were accurately transmitted by the bimodal voter accreditation system, Beaver's machine. And um, when it was time for the um, uploading of uh, the presidential results, the Beaver's and the network started having hitches. That was the testimony of Friday Eguma. Now, he went further to testify under oath that he didn't actually go against his job as a presiding officer, but when he saw that the results couldn't be transmitted, the presidential results couldn't be transmitted, he had to take the results themselves or himself to the collation center in the state. Now, he reported that there were results changing at the world level or at the state level. This was what this particular witness reported. Secondly, this Mrs. Grace Timothy, who was the presiding officer of Plateau State, also gave a testimony against the um, APC and the commission that she accurately uploaded and registered people for the House of Reps elections and uploaded it to the IREF um, successfully, but the presidential results couldn't be recorded and uploaded successfully. Of course, we saw all this physically. Now, the INEC staff are testifying against themselves. This is so strong, and I will tell you what, this case is becoming more interesting because I don't know if those involved, the respondents, INEC and the APC, are settled anywhere they are because PDP are having this at the tip of their fingers as well as Labour Party are burning the court with fire. Let me give you more updates. Furthermore, amongst, among or alongside the 10 witnesses produced by the PDP, so far, 10 have testified to um, on oath and to the goodness of the PDP and, um, and these testimonies were admitted by the tribunal headed by Chief Justice um, Samani Haruna Simon. Okay, now for the update from the Labour Party, the Labour Party today have successfully tendered all electoral documents, polling unit forms, and so on to this honorable court. And um, these documents are said to have alleged to have come from all the 36 states. But however, the Labour Party is not challenging results in all the 36 states, they are challenging results in the 18 states. And so far, I have told you a number of times results that have been tendered or forms that have been tendered so far. Forms EC8, A, B, C respectively from Benue State, from Akwaibom State, from Ekiti State, from Plateau State, from Abia State, from um, um, Lagos State, from River State, and then from um, states like Imo State, furthermore, and then Ebony State, Edo State, and so on and so forth have been tendered, okay, as you can go on and on. So I will tell you that the tribunal is getting this thing right this time around and they, I hope that they are pushing us to something very, very positive. Now, witnesses were cross-examined by the council to INEC and the All Progressive Congress respectively under oath 
Chief Wole Olani Pekun, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, and Prince Latif Fagwemi, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, respectively, who objected to all testimonies of the witnesses. Although um, these testimonies were all overruled by the tribunal. Okay. Now, meanwhile, after hearing today, um, the chairman of the petition or the tribunal adjourned uh, the hearing till tomorrow, the ninth day of June. 2023 and this particular head of the tribunal is no other but justice haruna samani simon so that is the overview of what happened in court today i will tell you that the labor party is making headways and i would not actually um, uh, write them off in this particular petition neither will i write the pdp off in this petition all these parties are making a headway and uh, the stories seem to be positive so i would say we'll stay glued to nation's voice tower for more updates tomorrow Keep a date with me. Now, um, the next update I have for you is still on the tribunal, but this time around is about the governorship election petition tribunal in Lagos State. Okay, now, um, the governorship election petitions tribunal in Lagos State, where the Labour Party and its gubernatorial candidate, Badebo Roda Vivo, um, have been challenging um, the results of the election right from the day it was announced by INEC. Okay, now, um, the truth is, Hearing has commenced and for today's hearings there were rancors or there were issues, there were catastrophic confusions that were recorded in court. Now recall that the Labour Party and its candidate have challenged the gubernatorial election results in the state that declared Babajide Sangwolu as the winner, pointing to lots of electoral malpractices and political thuggery as reasons for the non-accurate and presentation and coalition and transmission of results by the independent national electoral commission chapter of the state now recall one mr abayomi arabambi the factional national publicity secretary of the labor party from the lamidi akpapa led faction of the labor party you remember now this same man has come to show his brief and his very strong involvement with the said anti-party um, activities that were alleged by him. We thought all this were lies. Now, furthermore, he came to court earlier during the proceedings and presented a fake lawyer to be the attorney standing in for the Labour Party in Lagos. People that were supporting the Labour Party, chieftains of the Labour Party in Lagos, and other important members of the Labour Party outrightly sent him away from court and disgraced him together with the attorney he brought to court. This has got too much and um, the members of the Labour Party could not hold this anymore. So, as a result of what happened, they had to send him away disgracefully as per what happened to his principal, Lamidi Pashiru Akwapa, during when he came to disrupt the court hearing at the Presidential Elections Petitions Tribunal in the Court of Appeal in Abuja. You remember the reoccurrence when it happened, right? Now, let me allow you to watch the video, the complete video of how Abayomi Arabambi was disgraced out of the court room in Lagos State, with, together with his attorney, the fake attorney he brought. And then I will have the chairman of the Labour Party from Lagos State address newsmen on the situation of the ongoing gubernatorial elections petitions tribunal in Lagos state this has got to stop because lots of anti-party activities are going on in the background to truncate the labor party's tribunal peti petitions tribunal in all the 36 states you remember that allegation it has come to reality now watch this <laughs> And the need for us to get rid of miscreants, unscrupulous elements within us and in this country. Arab Ambi came as a witness for APC. And he claims that he's representing Labour Party. Hey, that was what we stood against. That he has been expelled and he cannot stand for Labour Party. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. He brought a lawyer, a fake, a fake lawyer, God bless you. Yes. 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 I heard him. Yes. Yes. He brought a lawyer to represent Labour Party. 
So I stood up and I said, I'm the chairman of Labour Party in Lagos State. Yes. This man has no right to come and represent us because number one, as we speak, is not part of Labour Party. Yes. Yes. And it, it's important right now for we to stand this categorically. He came in with armed policemen yes. and dogs. And dogs. And dogs. And dogs. Yes. They came with about five vehicles mm -hmm. full of dogs. Full and of dogs. dogs. Full of five Powerless. Dogs. We're gone. Now, what we're saying is that it's important for the security, the police, DSS, not to aid these people. They are not worth it. Because what they are doing, helping them and aiding them, would eventually cause anarchy. Yes. Yes. Because this man cannot be parading himself as Labour Party member. He's putting he's putting in legality or legality. Yes. And this will not be accepted. Yes. It will not be accepted. Yes. We have suffered enough. enough. Yes. We have been attacked. We've been maimed. People have been killed. And yet this man keeps parading himself. This is what we stood up against in the court. When he came, he attacked people and was spilling all sorts. And we, we told him he should keep his mouth shut because he's not Labour Party and, and he yes. cannot represent Labour Party. Yes. Yes. It's simple. Yes. It's simple. So we are calling on the, there's a court order. He's training Arab and B and cohorts yes. from parading themselves as the National Working Committee in Labour Party. Yes. Because number one, these things were tendered in court. And to God be the glory, God dismiss that lawyer, that fake lawyer, yes. from acting yes. on behalf of, yes. to applaud the, the judges for taking the right stand. And they need to be able to boost the confidence of the people. Yes. So that we can trust in their judgment. Yes. Yes. How can somebody come just exactly what happened in Dio's case? All right, welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is Still Nation Voice Tower, your most preferred YouTube channel. Now, the truth is this. Um, sometime during the Abayomi, Arabambi, Anslem, Arabe, Bashiru, Lamidi, Akupa-led faction, when the issues were heating up, the polity was heating up during the first um, first terms of the court sessions at the Court of Appeal in Abuja, talking about the, the presidential elections presidential tribunal that involved Labour Party and so on, there were allegations that Abayomi Arabambi, as, uh, or, uh, 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 or together with other members of his own faction, were going about in the 36 states withdrawing the Labour Party's cases at the various election tribunals. That particular allegation was vehemently denied by the Arabambi and the Lamidi-led faction. Now, today has shown the, it has shown it all. Arabambi has been involved in active party activities and he was disgraced out of court in Lagos State. Well, the the wicked and the strange and um, the, the the unconventional and the dubious and the deceitful will always be disgraced. That is how it is. Next on my update, I have um the former Kaduna State gubernatorial candidate of the People's Democratic Party and also former senator representing Kaduna North Central District, Senator Shea Husani, has taken to his verified Twitter page to react to photos of, of some late men of God who were said to have been kidnapped and murdered by suspected terrorists during the Nasir El Rufai led government. Now, he noted that if he cannot get a more suitable word than a bigot, he is going to create one for El Rufai. Recall that there has been a video trending online about Nasir El Rufai, the former governor of Kaduna State, allegedly addressing Muslim clerics in Kaduna about a supposed or a supposed plan or ploy to involve in a Muslim Muslim ticket and justifying the reason why he took a Muslim for his assistant during his time or his deputy during his time as governor. Now, the ex-lawmaker, Sheh Usani, who seemed to be throwing a jab at the former governor, said that he cannot imagine the fact that El Rufai ruled his people for good eight years and these clerics were abducted, murdered and buried 
and the so-called governor could not pay condolence visits to their families or even their respective denominations. Let me read from the official Twitter handle of um, Shehu Sani, uh, who actually posted this earlier today. Reactions have been trolling this particular video of Erufai. Let me read. Imagine a governor of a state for eight years and these high-profile clerics were murdered by terrorists in his state and he never for once bothered to visit their families for condolence or even speak personally on the tragedies. If I don't find a word bigger than a bigot, I would coin it. This particular write-up was from Sheikh Hussani and I would say what lots of people, both Muslim and Christian alike, have come out to draw out and um, to react over the video that had El Rufai address Muslim clerics. That is too much for El Rufai. And we thank God that he has gone out of government and given way for more serious people to undertake the government in Kaduna State. Lots of wanton killings, kidnaps and, and, and murders have been have taken place in Kaduna State, especially the Kaduna North side and the places that have a high majority and population of Christians in that uh, same state. So we were all visible and we were all present when El Rufai couldn't do anything about these things. So. We wouldn't actually blame anyone for calling out El Rufai at this time, at this point in time. I brought you an update earlier yesterday about the current chairman of um, the Kaduna State um, Christian Association of Nigeria when he called out El Rufai and exposed all his dealings accordingly as it bordered and as it affected the Christians in Kaduna State. That is that on that particular update. Finally, before I go further, I would urge you, please, all subscribers, both incoming and already existing, to please like our videos, share these videos to people around you and people in diaspora. Please drop a comment for us in the comment section. And don't forget, most importantly, tap the subscribe button, tap the notification bell, so you could get updates anytime we drop new videos. These activities you do make us go viral to serve you better. Yes, finally, President Asiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu today had a meeting with stakeholders from the oil and gas sector and the National Nigerian um, Petroleum um, Corporation, NNPC. The meeting was aimed at striking the balance between um, the hike in fuel pump price and the welfare of the masses in Nigeria as regards to the recent removal of the fuel subsidy by President Asiwa Jubola Ahmed Tinubu on the day he assumed office on the 29th day of May 2023 after swearing in. Watch the outcome of the meeting. Different stakeholders, especially the Director General and CEO of the NNPC, gave us the outcome of this meeting. I think this could be positive to keeping smiles and putting a smile on the faces of Nigerians as we wait in hope to see what will be resolved if the high in fuel pump price will be brought down or if it will remain as it is. Watch this interesting video. The outcomes were amazing. Trust me. I'm sure you all have seen what different states have begun to do in, in partnership and, and in support of this policy. Some states have reduced uh, the number of days workers are coming to work from three to four days. Uh, others have uh, introduced different interventions. Uh, we want to call it intervention, not palliatives, because that word has been abused. Um, but the truth is that uh, those are uh, immediate term and stop gap interventions. Um, uh, some of us are looking at um, um, enhancement of minimum wage. Mr. President has announced today that you know NEC should immediately begin uh, to sit, uh, led by His Excellency the Vice President, um, Senator uh, Akashim Shetima, and the Committee of NEC, alongside you know with the economic team and marketers, should sit down and come up with a wholesome uh, um, approach that would be beneficial. Uh, to the common man uh, and generality of, of Nigerians. Both the government intervention and their own interventions complementing each other will seriously uplift the masses from whatever envisaged negative impact of, of, the, of that policy. It will, uh, it will act as a cushion to, to, to the impact of this uh, policy. So that is it in a nutshell. He did pledge that the whole industry and I had the MD of NNPC Limited on my left, you know, and we all collectively agreed that we're going to work at providing real mass transit buses that work, the ones that will run on CNG, which is the compressed natural gas and diesel interchangeably. 
and hopefully we're going to start with about 50 to 100 and that is in the very very short term and then and these are locally produced so you see that we're also providing jobs a lot more jobs because we're using local assembly plants we're not importing this that's less pressure on our foreign exchange and that's more jobs for our Nigerians. All right, all said and done. I hope you enjoyed our time together. I would urge you to please keep a date with us anytime, any day for more updates because I told you what, we wouldn't back down from bringing you political updates back to back to back, both in Nigeria and outside the shores of this country. And I will tell you what, the most heated case in the country right now is the ongoing presidential elections petitions tribunal. The Labour Party is going. That's what I would say. The Labour Party is going, the PDP is going. Well, we don't know who was victorious at the polls, if it was the People's Democratic Party or if it was the Labour Party. So we'll keep our fingers crossed and you, you know I will bring you more updates on this issue. Okay, so don't forget to always stay glued to Nation's Voice Tower. See you next time and bye.